Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. The Bible also tells us like you have learned that God has, let's go to um, Revelation chapter 4, please, from verse 10 to 11. We're learning how to function like Christ. I'm showing you, it says, the four and twenty elders fell down before him and sat down on the throne and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before him, saying, pay attention now, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, help me, and honor and power for thou has created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created i like these three words glory and honor and power glory and honor you are worthy to receive that means it should be captured in the life of every believer glory and honor and power say that after me glory and honor and power glory and honor and power everything that makes God God his wisdom glory everything that makes God God his intelligence glory and the Bible says honor and then power found in him and it must be found in all the saints the Bible calls God Almighty not only the Creator it calls him the owner and the ruler of everything. First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 11. I'm showing you a few things so that you will see how God functions. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory. There you find it again. And the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and is in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted above it all. Please look at me. Did you ever read in your Bible that we have been raised up with Christ? Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 2. That means everything that God has that was invested in Christ. That is now the believer's reality. Listen, you cannot function like God until you know what God has. Until you know what God carries. Not just who he is. When you talk about who he is, you talk about his nature. But you must know what God has. Because it also belongs to you in Christ. Are we together? It belongs to you in Christ. Paul taught us that we are possessors of this. The Bible calls it inheritance in light. That the saints have an inheritance. And that inheritance is in light. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says God had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The Bible tells us that we have been given exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. What did God give Jesus as a reflection of himself? He gave Jesus power. He gave Jesus authority. All the saints have power and the saints have authority. But the power and the authority they have is knowledge activated. Are we together? Knowledge activated. There is no mention in the Bible of God functioning in ignorance. That means in ignorance the saints cannot function like God. He dwells in the midst of light. He functions from a standpoint of light. He speaks in light. He acts in light. When the saints dwell and remain in darkness, they are not able to function like God. Now, Psalm 115, please, and verse 16. Let's hurry up. Psalm 115 and verse 16. The heaven, I like this. Even the heaven of heavens are the Lord's. Read with me, Koinonia. One to go. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. One more time. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. The real trustee of this earth is everyone who is in Christ. Not everyone who is alive. Everyone who is in Christ. The real trustee of the earth, I repeat, 
is everyone who is in Christ, not everyone who is alive. Let me tell you the truth. When you have these mentalities as a man of God, you know that you have a property somewhere. I don't know where it is, but there is somewhere. You know that the issue of housing is settled in Christ. It is just the wisdom for you to find your portion. But by this revelation, there is, you walk tall, not in pride, but in confidence, knowing that I may be in a rented apartment today, but in this planet called earth, there is a space for me. I am in Christ. The earth was willed to Abraham and to his seed, his seed being Christ. And since I am in Christ, I am a beneficiary, a partaker, not just the spiritual blessings, but the estate that was given to Abraham. Apostle, this is a nice word. You don't believe it, you will not have any land. I tell you. Hallelujah. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You have this revelation, you can function that way. You can know that there is a permanent site for Koinonia. You can know that there is a permanent site for every vision. You can know that where you are now, there is a place. I don't know where it is, but I know it is there. This revelation already is helping you function like God. Who is learning? Let me tell you some more how God functions. The Bible says, even God, look up please, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. That means God does not wait for things to manifest before he calls them. He calls them to manifest. You get up in the morning and with the spirit of vision, you begin to design a life using words. You are functioning like God. Do you believe this? Man was created in the image of God and he was created in the likeness of God. Now, there are a few things about man that I need you to know. About four of them, then I will show you three ways classically of functioning like Christ and we'll begin to pray. Number one, I've taught you in this place and let me repeat it, that man generally is the legitimate steward of the earth the legitimate steward of the earth is man generally god intended for the earth to come under the stewardship of men but because men have been separated now into fallen men and those who are in christ are we together access to be possessors stewards and custodians of god's property look at me if you have a son and you have a property and someone who is outside of that family wants to lay claim on the property, what do you do? You get a lawyer because something is wrong. Am I right on that? The prodigal son, provided he was within the family, he had access to his father's estate. When he chose as an act of his will to go out of the family, whatever he was given, that was all he had. He lost everything. When he came back into the fold, he now was reintroduced into that covenant of sonship. This is how it is. Make no mistakes about it. The earth may not be in the hands of believers now. It is clear that believers are not the ones who are possessors. And when I talk about the earth, I don't just talk about the land mass. Are we together? I'm not just talking about the land mass. I'm talking of manipulating the mind control systems too. The earth, believers are not supposed to be victims of policies and a modus operandi that is antichrist. It is because we do not understand how to function like Christ. We have been so reduced to a point where we are victims of anything that comes from anywhere. Unfortunately, Satan went ahead of many believers and he's captured the kings and the gatekeepers of the world. And they continue to manipulate the cosmos to come up with policies and come up with things that are antichrist. We are largely victims. But I believe in Jesus' name that things are changing. Amen. There are some of you here by accessing kingdom influence. God is going to elevate you like Esther. And put you at strategic places. Where you will, you will protect and defend the cause of the kingdom. Who believes what I'm saying? Amen. Refer to my message redefining the coming revival. I teach you there that the coming revival will be beyond pulpits. 
It will not be the way we have described. It will not just be the campaign of filling stadiums alone. God is going to be raising people strategically and he's going to be keeping them across several places. You will see Esther's in that revival. You will see Daniel's in that revival. It's not only Elijah's you will see. It's not only Paul's that you will see. You will see Gideon's that will arise. You will see Joseph's that will arise. Are we together now? The revival will not come the way we have seen the Welsh and the rest. It will not just be the revival of stadiums and healings and wheelchairs. It will be revivals of changing policies, rising to a point of kingdom influence where one man can single-handedly protect the cause of Christ across a continent with one policy, one policy, one policy. Let me tell you the truth. Not everybody is going to be a prophet. Not everybody is going to be an apostle. Not everybody is going to be a teacher. And unfortunately, we've marketed this ministry so much that anyone who is not in the fivefold fields is not part of God's program. No. Go and read your Bible. The fivefold without a Daniel will be in trouble. It was because there was nobody in the parliament. And since Daniel was not there, nobody to defend him. If there were enough people in Babylon, they would have said, no, this policy, we cannot see how it applies to Babylon. It is dangerous when we only have Christians in church. It is dangerous for the nation. We must have Christians in the assemblies, in the presidency. Are we together? We must have Christians as CEOs. We must have Christians as policy makers. This is the apostolic model that was left with the church. There was a time the Lord told, the, uh, told Apostle Paul, I think, he said, do not be afraid. I have many people in that city. Your advantage is number. There are many people who are believers. We need vice chancellors who are men who function like God. Are we together now? We need lecturers who are men who function like God. We need chief medical directors who do not just understand medicine and surgery, but have the anointing. They know how to function like God. Are we together now? We need CEOs who are not just intelligent people counting naira and cobble and dollars, but people who can defend the cause of Christ. If you are one of such, shout a loud amen. When God created man in his image, let me tell you the truth. He did not create man to just attend miracle services and crusades forever. It is a very distorted theology of kingdom advance. A major part of a believer's life should not just be in church and crusade grounds. Church is a training ground. The cosmos is the field. If all we keep doing with all due respect is to bring members and keep pounding them with knowledge without a strategic way of helping them deploy it. Both we, the men of God, and the members will soon be frustrated. What I teach you now, tomorrow you are in your office. By Sunday you are excited to return because you've applied it and you've seen it work. Now coming to church becomes an exciting adventure. What more do I need to learn? I applied this and it worked like fire. I applied the law of honor, functioning like Christ. As a CEO, I, re I redesigned a model and in one week, doors of favor open. Why wouldn't you want to come to church? You would drag all your executives and say, let me tell you, church is not just a place that builds fanatics. It builds intelligent people that the world can apply to nation building. You've, you've heard me. You, you, can, you can literally bring statistics to show that from the time I became a member of this church, look at our productivity. This is the language that will subdue principalities and powers not just blind fanatism it will only work among a few small-minded people but at a macro level it will have no effect on god's program i'm telling you are we together do you realize that there is an intentional plot by hell oh i i wish i have the liberty to tell you the things that are cooking that will be unveiled as the days come and it is targeted at the church we have no idea the the spirit of the antichrist because we have refused to learn how to function in the image and the likeness of god darkness is brewing up policies brewing up strategies strategies to destroy schools strategies to destroy an entire generation of children 
and what are we doing in the church just shouting hallelujah which is important and we are losing our minds and not thinking we are not translating kingdom come intelligently to serve God's purpose but things are changing to function like Christ look at me when Jesus walked upon the earth I want you to notice how Jesus did ministry number one he started by doing all kinds of crusades healing that means if we are to function like Christ there must be captured within the church are we together now a people and a platform that allows Christ to be revealed do you know what it means to gather 5,000 people aside women and children it was beyond a crusade it was a statement that God is alive it is not all programs that are just for soul winning alone there are times that there are statements that show the health of the church that the church is still alive in numbers enough to influence society are we together number two we see that jesus did not shy away from the powers that be do you read in the bible how jesus interacted with people from an economic standpoint one person whose economic approach was punishing a lot of people called um zacchaeus is that not in your bible you would think i hope you know jesus was not going to his house jesus was on his way passing but when he saw zacchaeus he said zacchaeus come down i'm going to your house there must be a space within the church where the purposes of god must be represented in our economic policies not just crusades our economic policies how about nicodemus nicodemus was an intellectual he was a doctor of the law he came to jesus by night i hope you know the whole of john 3 16 was a conversation between jesus and one intellectual person we have used it today to save millions of people but it came as a conversation there must be a part of the church that relates to the intellectual world we must know that just because we are anointed we are not dummies He's not only a creator, he's the only wise God. Now to the king eternal, he says, the king immortal, the king invincible, he calls him the only wise God. It is in his, he's the fountain of wisdom. Functioning like God. Let me tell you the truth. Most of the challenges in society, in addition to not having the nature of Christ, most of the defeat that is in the life of believers is because we have not been trained to function like Christ. There are many dimensions to that function, but I want to give you three for the purpose of part one of this series and then we'll pray. Let's do that very quickly. Who is learning everything I've been teaching? To function like Christ. Number one, look up please. According to God's design as revealed in the life of Jesus, please, Please, lend me your attention. According to God's design, as revealed in the life of Jesus, we find that in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, the very code to function like Christ is given to us there. That man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Who is learning now? That in functioning like Christ, your first assignment is to prioritize the word of God. If you do not know the word of God and you do not have access to the word of God, you cannot function like Christ. Jesus himself said that. Man, any man, a businessman, a man of God, a man as a father, a man as a politician, a man as a professional, a man as a diplomat, a career person, a man as anyone in the fivefold ministry, whoever that person is, if you were to function like Christ, then it will have to go beyond bread. It says you function by respect and engaging every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Say after me the word of God. One more time, say the word of God. So to the believer in Christ, intending to function like God, the word of God becomes the template. Are we together? The basis for everything you do must be with respect to what God said. With respect to what God said. Not with respect to what you feel. Not with respect to what society is saying. The believer's entire Christian experience 
is with respect to the word of God. The way you give with respect to the word of God. The way you talk with respect to the word of God. The way you do things with respect to the word of God. If you lose the word of God factor, you have no basis of functioning like God. Look at this. When God made Adam and Eve, I thought the only thing he gave them was a garden. But the real thing he gave them was his word. Because when Satan came, he didn't bother about the garden. The first place Satan went to was what God said. Satan knows, he has an understanding that if he wants to distort a man and stop that man from functioning like Christ, all he needs to do is to bring you to a point where you do not respect the supremacy of God's word and that you build your life on any other thing minus the word of God. He knows you are defeated. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, still speaking about the word of God. This was Paul praying. He says, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, listen carefully, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding spiritual understanding now when we talk about knowledge in the kingdom we do not just mean knowledge of secular things there are three kinds of knowledge a believer needs to excel number one which is the highest is spiritual knowledge spiritual knowledge the knowledge of the word of god number two intellectual knowledge the knowledge of the laws that govern the cosmos the knowledge of the laws that govern the cosmos. Then number three, knowledge as specific to whatever field of endeavor. I'll repeat that again. There are three kinds of knowledge every believer needs to have. Generally speaking, the highest is spiritual knowledge. Knowledge as revealed by the word of God. Number two, the knowledge of the laws of life. This physical world you see has laws and you must know it. There are laws you need to know, else you will fail. Number three, the knowledge in your field now, whether you are a doctor. So if the only thing you know is the knowledge of medicine and surgery, or the knowledge of law, or the knowledge of, um, um, uh, what do you call it now, engineering, or the knowledge of architecture, you will be limited in life. In as much as you are an intelligent person, you may say. Let me tell you the truth. The knowledge of your field, your field of practice, with respect to the realms of knowledge available is the lowest level of knowledge you can obtain. So don't just say, I'm a graduate. I have masters in business administration. I'm, I, I'm a, a consultant in medicine and surgery. Now, I, I, I appreciate you. With respect to your field, you will do well. But with respect to living, you will live so poorly and so defeated have you seen people who are so intelligent as far as their field of endeavor is concerned but rate them as per their life and destiny is nothing to be desired is because they did not contend for these three realms of knowledge let me repeat it again for your learning the highest level of knowledge that every believer must contend for is the knowledge spiritual knowledge the knowledge of the ways of god as revealed in scripture are we together the second level of knowledge is the knowledge of the laws that govern the cosmos. There are laws that govern the cosmos. And then number three, knowledge in your area of specialty or your area of, of endeavor. So you can be an architect and yet the results in your life and the quality of your life is beyond the practice of architecture. Because number one, you have wholesome spiritual knowledge. Number two, you understand the laws that govern the cosmos. i give you an example. The law of relationships is both a spiritual law and one of the fundamental laws that governs the cosmos. You can be very intelligent, but not knowing that law alone can cost you so much. Are we learning? Everybody say the word of God. When you see that we emphasize the word of God, it is because this is the modus operandi, the basis for every believer's decisions and choices should be the word of God. Everything. 
The way you build business by the word. The way you build ministry by the word. The way you build family by the word. Are we together? The way you build your corporation by the word. The way you build your spiritual life. If it must be accurate, it must be by the word. Now let me tell you this. The greatest attack in your life will come from Satan distracting you and making you trivialize the place of God's word. Show me a man who does not place value on the word of God but desires to function like Christ. I show you a man who wants to drive a car without battery, fuel, tires. How will that car be driven? Are we together now? Imagine a man who wants to drive a car. The cars do not have tires, no battery to start the car, nothing else. And yet the man can be sitting there for years kicking the car and saying, I know one day I will use this car to go to Lagos. You are wasting your time. Uh -uh. There are components in a car you can do without. If your mirror is broken, the car will still move. But if there's no tire, the car will not move. The components in this car called your destiny do not all have equal value. There are things you can do without. For instance, everybody does not need to love you. The paint of a car can scratch and yet it can speed more than a new car. There are, you have to major on the majors and minor on the minors. Imagine a man who would rather give up his tire to buy paint for his car. Is that a wise man? This is what a lot of people are doing. They are giving up their spiritual life so that they will look beautiful or look handsome. My goodness, my God. Imagine a very a well-decorated car no battery no kickstarter no steering no nothing but there is a big dvd player inside shouting around i say sit down we're going will you get anywhere no sir listen i hope you get what i'm saying now there are many of us who cannot function like christ because we have not respected the word of god when jesus came watch this what was he doing at age 12 talk to me Jesus went to the temple. Are we together? And he was listening. This was the word incarnate. He knew that if he was to function like his father, because he had now come in the flesh, stripped himself. Don't think that Jesus came with memory of scripture in his head. No. He stripped all of that. He came as a human being. Everything he knew that he said it is written, he learned it. It did not come automatically. He stripped himself of everything God became a man. He went to the temple knowing that he needed these resources of it is written. Please look at me. If you don't take the word of God serious in your life, I give you a guarantee that eventually you will fail. You will not be able to function like Christ. You will speak, but not like God. You will move, but not like God. You will act, but not like God. You see, the fruit of the spirit help you to be like Christ the gifts of the Spirit help you to act like Christ whether it's the gift of wisdom whether it's the gift of whatever together they help you to act like Christ are we together you think like Christ you act like Christ but for most people we have focused like I said earlier on on gifts and all of that without focusing on the nature of Christ but that when you get the issue of the nature of Christ, you allow the Holy Spirit to do that inner work, producing the character of the Spirit. The next assignment is that you must respect the Word of God. The beautiful thing about the Word of God is that it is the tool that builds both the image and the likeness. Same word. So as you submit yourself to the Word of God, watch this now. That which is locked up within you, potentially, in the new birth experience now begins to find expression i don't know how people live without respecting the word of god they don't study it they don't care about it and yet they want to get god's result you can never get god's result until you follow god's strategies did you hear what i said you can never get god's result until you follow god's strategy so apostle I want to prosper the Bible says I should prosper you have various options one of it is to open up the Word of God and find out how did God design his creation to prosper 
follow it diligently and you will arrive at God's result are we together man shall not live by bread alone but by every word I give you an instance I have drummed it here in koinonia let's try it again for one last time tonight the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so the power of words it says declare ye that thou mightest be justified how many believers know that if you are to function like God your speaking must be seen as a vital component to your life and your destiny and yet many people do not speak I'm not talking of just jumping and shouting rubbish I'm talking of creating your life with intelligence knowing that God said for him to see so you must say for you to see no weapon fashioned against me will prosper in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare my September must be better than my August my October must be better than my September my November better than October December better than November what is the basis for that speaking that the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth ever brighter more and more unto the perfect day are you learning this now it is true the Bible says he keepeth his bones and none is lost. So you prophesy in the name of Jesus as I sojourn. My body is healthy. My organs are healthy. My body rejects any virus, rejects anything that is not of God. This is true. If you do not learn to function like this, you are not functioning like God surely they shall gather but because their gathering is not of the lord they will scatter they come against me in one way and they flee in seven ways hallelujah i'm showing you how to function like god when you understand the word of god now you can engage these three dimensions one of them is speaking speaking the talking spirit produce other talking spirits who designed their lives with the power of words the power of words I will never stop speaking God's word over my life I will never stop speaking God's word over you I will never stop speaking God's word over koinonia I will never sp stop speaking God's word over my destiny someone say I will speak say I will declare say I will decree one more time say I will speak say I will declare say I will decree never allow a day pass without you making declarations of God's Word but here's the question if you have not hidden that word in your heart you will have no vocabulary spiritual vocabulary the problem with many believers is not that they do not want to speak is that they are bankrupt of the scriptures they have not hidden their, the scripture enough to declare it you want to function like Christ get on the project of transferring the Word of God from the pages of this book into your spirit man that's what Jesus did for 18 years he invested his time with the Word of God and in three years he lived an invincible life demonstrated dominion and finished the plan of redemption in the name of Jesus koinonia goes from glory to glory the bible says i am the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and we are for wonders in israel koinonia will never go up and come down that epileptic destiny is not part of our heritage in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that the lord multiplies me i will not be small he glorifies me you see that now the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? The Bible says, whatsoever he doeth, prosper. You lay your hands in the morning before you go to the office. Don't think you are being childish. I'm showing you how God functions. In the name of Jesus, every document I lay my hands upon in the office will not bring me trouble. I will not sign anything that will lead to the dismissal of my job. You lay your hands on your mind. I have the mind of Christ. In the name of Jesus, I have the mind of Christ. I decree and declare I'm performing optimally in an extraordinary dimension the spirit of grace is at work in me you quote the scripture like Elihu that there is a spirit in Joshua Selman and the inspiration of the Almighty makes me of understanding
Ah, my heart is indicting a good matter. Yeah, I speak of excellent things. As a preacher, you will tell yourself, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. That when I open my mouth, I'm not speaking gibberish. I'm writing and rewriting and deleting and rewriting over the destinies of men. I will call on one man and a nation will respond. You believe that? Listen, every time God had a need, there was provision. Every time Jesus had a need, there was provision. He said, go to the streets whose roads divide. You will find a cult there that no man had ridden on. There is something for you that no one has touched. If you don't know how to call it, you can remain where you are. Are we together? Greater light. How to function like Christ. Let me tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Walk with the simplicity of this truth and watch what happens in your life. You know how the spirit of depression functions? It brings you to a point of silence. Medical science will tell you, when you say a depressed person is not a noisy person, he keeps quiet. Then he takes a deep breath. Ah, so my life, hmm, not me. I get up in the morning, this is the day the Lord made, not the Lord and Satan. This is the day the Lord made. He considered my interest in making that day. I rejoice and I am glad in it. Hallelujah. Even when you are going through trouble and negative circumstances, what does the word of God say? Count it all joy, my brethren, when you go through diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith produces patience. It says, let faith, let patience have its work that you may be matured, entire, wanting nothing. You get to the office and they drop a sack letter and say your services are not needed. You don't just say, God, just kill me. Just kill me. No. That's not how God functions. When he saw darkness, the spirit of God did not run away from the darkness. He hovered around the face of the darkness. Look at that situation eyeball to eyeball. I won't run away from you. I'm tired of running away from the financial situation. I will not run away from the rent situation. When you run, you will live to fight another day. I face you with faith. I may not have a job now. I don't have an idea how I will come out of that financial situation. But I start by speaking. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will raise me from death and bring me to a point of blessings. Start from there. Greater light. Kings reign by their words. It is their words that are penned down and become policies. Are we together now? I wake up in the morning, I'm speaking. I walk around, I'm speaking. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. I'm blessed. I can whom it beyond, just, just below my breath. But I'm speaking. I'm speaking. I'm flying if I'm not sleeping. You will see me just mom. If I'm not praying in tongues, I'm making declarations. As this plane is flying, that's how my destiny will fly too. I don't waste opportunities. No. The same way this plane could not be resisted. 35,000 feet above sea level, leaving every mountain, every valley. That's how my destiny is following too. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I'm a well-watered garden. Well-watered garden. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well-watered garden. Koinonia, you will go from glory to glory. It is your heritage in Christ. In the name of Jesus, our young men in Koinonia are gainfully employed. They are responsible people. Arm robbers are not being raised here. Touts are not being raised here. Responsible, visionary, kingdom-driven people. Our ladies are after the order of Esther. In the name of Jesus Christ, women with nobility and power, women with character and virtue. Found it in the Bible. Where did you find this apostle? Genesis chapter 17 and verse 6. Genesis. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. Kings shall come out of thee. So when you hear someone come to testify and say I was an ordinary person, I now walk in UN. I sit back there and I said, that's right. The speaking is working. Kings, kings. Kings. Hallelujah. You can transfer this same mentality 
as a mother lay hands on your children every day before they go to school let them learn it once they are done with breakfast they line up let them remind you that you forgot to speak over their life my son you are great say after me i'm a champion say after me i'm a warrior speak to him before some some ill-mannered young boy somewhere goes to destroy the confidence of your child in school especially in this day that we live in some bully gets up somewhere and rubbishes your child and he begins to fail say after me boy you are a champion he says i'm a champion say i'm the head and not the tail before you know it he begins to say it. mommy you forgot to say this i'm a champion i'm the head and not the tail if somebody tells him you are stupid he will say my mother did not say i'm stupid she's told me i'm a champion i'm a champion i am victorious hallelujah as a man of god you may not be in ministry yet don't let some ignorant person look at you and just call you a riffraff one young all these young guys going nowhere no you are going somewhere they may be sincere but not everybody's on serious you may not yet have a platform you may not yet have a ministry but that is a mighty man in the spirit you have been furnished from the the furnace of affliction but it does not mean you will not carry grace hallelujah i will never repeat after satan did you hear what i said i will never repeat after satan he can say anything he says but you will not get a second voice even in parliament when they pass a policy they say who is there to second that policy it cannot be passed into law until there is a secondment come on talk to me government people is that not true so there are wonderful bills that they bring but because they lack a secondment it dies there if satan says you're a failure make sure you realize there is a bill about to be passed over your destiny but that you have the power to refuse you have the power to reject i function like christ i call the things that be not i call the things that be not i call the things that be not hallelujah I've not spoken to politicians in a long time. Let me speak to them. Politician, if you lose election, don't say I'm finished. You are repeating after Satan. Your relevance should not be tied to just an electoral office. It should be tied to your value. Elected or otherwise, I am serving my grace to my nation. They, I become a lampstand that cannot be denied, regardless of the party or political affiliation. Do you believe this? believe it believe it young lady believe that you can prosper by god in righteousness don't just sit down waiting for somebody to marry you into a blessed life that is wonderful but by god you can run through a troop by your god you can leap over a wall are we together now don't listen to nonsense that comes from society being a woman is not a cause being a female is not a cause there is no female female brain or male brain well biologically they have but spiritually as designed by god there are people championing all kinds of courses across the globe you can challenge yourself everybody say i will function like god by speaking say it by speaking consistent with the word say it again i will function like god by speaking consistent with the word say it again i will function like god by speaking consistent with the word don't forget what i taught you tonight never repeat after satan never leave this place knowing make up your mind i will never repeat after satan if he calls me a failure that's the bill about to be passed it dies there because there is no secondment but if God says you are lifted, I echo it. Yes, I am lifted. Oh, let it be passed into law that I am lifted. That every human being who sees me, there is a bill on my life. I call it prophecy. God has said I'm lifted. I agree that I'm lifted. The wisdom that puts me in that experience becomes mine. Hallelujah. Sit down. Let me give you one. Our time is gone. I can't do justice to the other two this thing has, has fired my spirit but we have to end you function like God by speaking and the basis of your declaration 
is the word of God. Regardless what you see, you are not just speaking gibberish. It is the word of God. Through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Hallelujah. My business is blessed. Yes, sir. Pray. Your home is blessed. You get up in the morning, you walk around in the name of Jesus. Where I'm staying is only my starting point. I will not end here. In the name of Jesus, I already see things that I'm doing for the kingdom. I may not be able to give as much as I want to give, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I finance the projects of the kingdom. You are a man of God, you are going to church. Don't drag yourself and hope that you will see members who are happy. No, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is sending daily to the church as many who should be saved. They are receiving the word and they are being transformed by it. As I speak to them, I'm not wasting time. Their spirits are open, they are receiving the word. It's bearing fruit in them. Look at me, believers. The basis of your counseling should be the word. The basis of your addressing anything, if you must speak, let it be with respect to scripture. Write that down. If you must speak, let it be with respect to scripture. If you must speak, good morning, how are you? I'm fine. May God bless you. How is everything? God bless you. How are your children? God bless you. How is Nigeria? <laughs> we bless the name of the Lord. You see, and you can't tell the oh, you can't say, oh, Nigeria, there are things you say they will slap you there so that you are wise. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. We, we, we know, we trust God for greater days. We know that God is doing great things. Let me tell you what will happen. If that person is not a person who loves God and has faith, he will leave you quietly because you sound boring based on the way they speak. In the name of Jesus Christ. When I speak over Nigeria, I do not speak over a Nigeria that is defeated. I don't speak over a Nigeria that is corrupt. I speak over a Nigeria that is loving God, serving God, exporting the gospel as a spiritual resource. And that things are changing gradually. We may not see it, but in the name of Jesus, I know that things will change. And God will make that happen for his name's sake. In the name of Jesus Christ. So the first way that we function like Christ, using the word of God as a reference, is by speaking like Christ. God is a talking spirit. All believers are talking spirits and must function as so. Listen carefully. God is a speaking spirit. God is a speaking spirit. All believers must be speaking spirits. They are speaking spirits and they must function as such. Number two. How do you function like Christ? By walking in obedience. Listen carefully. How do you function like Christ? By walking in obedience. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse 6 quickly please. The Bible says, who been in the form of God. Listen carefully. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Verse 7. The Bible says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the what? Likeness of men. Verse 8. The Bible says, being found in fashion as a man. I'd like us to read the remaining part of verse 8 together. He humbled himself and became Listen, nobody is born obedient. People become obedient. Did you get it there? Nobody is born obedient. The psalmist said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. Obedience is not a gift. It is a labor in the spirit. You become obedient. The Bible says he became. He became. It's a process. He became obedient. Even unto death. The death of the cross. The prophet of obedience verse 9 the bible says wherefore god had so highly exalted him obedience always leads to exaltation you ask how did jesus rise from the earth to sit on the throne it was not just speaking are you seeing now if the only thing you do is speaking you will get results but you'll be limited the exaltation of jesus went beyond speaking please look at me this is where i have a bit of um, a disclaimer for believers for most believers they believe that the entire scope of functioning like christ is to speak alone i refuse 
<clears throat> Jesus spoke, but he went beyond speaking. The basis for his exaltation was not speaking. The Bible does not tell us, but many times Jesus spoke, destroy this temple and I will build it again in three days. He spoke, but we see that beyond speaking, he obeyed. What did he obey? The principles as consistent with God's desire. God's desire was that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So Jesus obeyed even unto death. Can I tell you the truth? In addition to speaking, if you must function like Christ, you must learn the ways of God and obtain grace to obey. Someone shout obedience. One more time, say obedience. Don't be tired. You're almost there. Say obedience. A speaking spirit who does not walk in obedience will still be a limited spirit. Many are limited. I'm sorry to say there are ministers of the gospel who speak wonderful and great things and don't obey. God's servant Bishop Oedeko will say faith is not saying what God has said alone. Faith is doing what he has said as a way of committing him to deliver. I agree. Faith is beyond saying what God has said. Faith is doing what God has said so as to commit his word to deliver. Please look at me. The riches that are hidden in the word of God only answer to obedience. You start by speaking, but you don't stop there. Who is learning tonight? Don't think this is elementary. Believe me, this is greater light. It, is the, it, it gives you an explanation as to why many people don't seem to rise. They don't speak like God. They don't obey. We learn from Jesus. Are we together? Let me give you an example of a few things you need to obey if you want to rise. Here's what the Bible says. A diligent hand shall be made fat. Is that in your Bible? So you can speak in the name of Jesus increases on my life. You are right. But if you are not diligent, here's what the Bible says. Whatsoever your hand findeth to do. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. The Bible says do it as unto the Lord. Is that true? Yeah. So there are many people who do not obey. You don't obey the principles that are connected to the results you desire. And you wonder why in spite of abundant confession, things don't change. Obtain grace to speak, but obtain grace to obey. Everybody say obedience. obedience. Obey the laws of the kingdom. Honor is a law. Obey it. Diligence is a law. Obey it. Godliness is a law. Obey it. Uh, what else again? Capacity, value is a law. Obey it. Relationships is a law. Obey it. You will see the result there. Number one, to function like God. The word of God must be the basis of everything you do in the kingdom. You speak like God to function like God and that your speech must be with respect to the word of God. Number two, you obey consistent with the principles that are hidden in scripture. Let me give you number three and then we'll prepare to wrap up. Who has learned today? Are you ready? The third way we function by, like God is by sacrifice. <laughs> sacrifice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you only talk like God and obey like God and you are afraid of sacrificing like God, there is no dominion for you sacrifice obedience unto death there is obedience but there is obedience unto death sacrifice psalm 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice did you hear what paul said let no man trouble me for i bear upon my body i didn't just speak the word of god i did not just obey god there are scars as proof of sacrifice the sacrifice of praise, the labor of prayer, the labor of the word. These are sacrifices. None of these things are convenient. Sacrifice. Hallelujah. Do you know what it means to lock yourself and pray for two hours, three hours, maybe more than that? You are challenging yourself. It's beyond obedience. You have entered the realm of sacrifice. You know what it means to empty your account for the sake of the gospel and say, I want to make sure that God's program does not die in my hands. 
sacrifice this is beyond obedience and there are people who have entered that realm here's what the bible says greater love had no man than this that a man lays down his life can i tell you a man who speaks to be anointed a man who obeys to be anointed a man who sacrifices to be anointed the difference will be clear very clear are we together now very clear the realm of sacrifice is the realm where any spiritual activity agrees that it is the necessary requirement for attaining certain heights in the spirit whether you practice god forbid occultism or any bad practice there are heights have you heard of people who slept on graveyards because they were looking for power two days three days one week because they are looking for power to get money in business they understand sacrifice the church has embraced a gospel of excessive convenience and we have thrown away the sacrifice dimension Jesus came full of compassion full of grace and truth but a point came in his life where his obedience had to move to the realm of sacrifice to the point where he said father if it be thy will let me tell you ladies and gentlemen I don't I don't I hate to sound arrogant but if you fear sacrifice forget greatness forget dominion I've had a busy stretch of the week right from I don't know what day I don't know how many sermons I've preached from Wednesday or Thursday aside doing a lot of other things I return back now I'm here after service it's not like I'm going home to go and sleep there are still things to be done there are meetings the sound of revival just about a week coming sacrifice you don't carry the anointing on a vessel that craves for convenience sacrifice go and ask any ceo i know you see the jeep that is coming out of you see the beautiful office find out how late they stay to have meetings while you are sleeping sacrifice is the language of champions sacrifice is the language of greatness let me tell you the truth sacrifice at a point in time in your life you will get to a point where sacrifice is no longer circumstantial it literally becomes a realm that you live in that death will walk in you so that life will walk in others it's a mystery but it is true the more you die the more you live the more you are weak the more you become strong I learned this it's a principal law that governs the anointing God created man in his image and in his likeness the image of Christ the character the nature of God as revealed in Christ as captured in the fruit of the Spirit that it should be the template of the believer and then in addition it should become the environment that is the original ecosystem that every believer was designed to function and exist in and that if you run away from embracing and pressing to see manifest in your life the nature of God there are health consequences there are psychological consequences there are spiritual consequences there are physical consequences but when you learn to function like Christ your next assignment I mean you learn to be like Christ understanding the implication of being created in his image and now in Christ being restored to that image your next assignment is to learn how to function like Christ and I've told you when you get to the realm of functioning like Christ your modus operandi is not opinion is not emotions is not assumptions it is the word of God and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation and now brethren Acts 10 32 I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified you contend for light high level spiritual illumination and when you find it and hide it in your in your heart then your next assignment becomes to speak it to declare with faith to declare with understanding to use words to paint a picture of your destiny and to insist until things begin to change number two in addition to speaking you obtain what i call the doing grace in fact there's a teaching like that go online and search for a koinonia global the doing grace 
there is an end there is the saving grace but there is the grace that enables you you do the doing but the power comes from God the doing grace the grace to obey the grace to obey the grace to obey and then number three that is the realm that many of us need to get to tonight the realm of sacrifice where your life is literally poured as a drink offering can i tell you when you get to that point of sacrifice no enchantment and no divination against you can stand because you have gotten to the realm in the spirit called galatians 2 20 i have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me and the life that i now live in the flesh it says i live by the faith of the son of god it is at that point God will reprove people for you. Someone will be thinking evil against you because of the blood that drips from your altar. They are judged before they execute their will. Sacrifice. There are people to make enchantments again is a waste. I tell you, they have died many times serving the purposes of God. A sacrifice. Are we together? you provide the fire many of us sing that song without understanding i'll provide the sacrifice remember that song you provide i will open up feel me I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. At this point in my Christian experience, this is my assignment to myself, not just as a sermon to you. If I was created in the image of Christ, if I was created to function like him, my personal project becomes number one, that Christ be fully formed in me, fully formed in me, that the fruit of the spirit find unrestrained access in my life, that I become as clear a portrait as possible of the living Christ to my world. My next assignment becomes to learn further please do not miss oh well next week um next week is what now it's still another service oh beautiful i thought it was a miracle service so come next week come prepared i want to show you something about altars i want to open your eyes to something about altars we are going to be delving into something deep in the spirit i want to show you why conditions never change in spite of the fact that people pray and pray you pray and still see yourself where you used to see yourself in the midst of your prayer the same oppression happens there is an explanation hallelujah and then next week we'll take the time to pray some prayers i have found a key by the spirit tragedy can end i tell you circles can end if you don't know it this is greater light you can remain at the surface and keep laboring laboring with touch light whereas there is sunlight that can come please if you know that things have not been working in your life i want you to come next week with your heart open come prayerfully prayerfully and open your eyes but for now the challenge for you is that if you want creation to respect you then you must allow God to reset you to the version he authorized creation to respect. Any other thing you become that is inconsistent, creation would treat it as an antivirus. It will not work. You need to be restored to that version that reveals and manifests the nature of Christ. Love being the highest of that manifestation. And then to speak like Christ to be given to obedience and then to master sacrifice sacrifice 
as a key that elevates you. Rise up and let's pray. We have to end now. Hold hands with someone as we pray. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. One more time. Fill me up. just one prayer point for us tonight and I want you to pray it in the next one minute with all your heart father I contend for a greater revelation of your nature and character I contend for grace to function like you like never before lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray it says my little children of whom I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you until Christ be formed in you someone pray the nature of Christ formed in me the character of the Christ formed in me the fruit of the Spirit manifesting in me manifesting through me a believer is praying manifesting through me manifesting through me love joy peace patience self-control goodness I am merciful I am kind I am compassionate, loving Jesus and loving men. Decree and declare that I begin to function like Christ. Like Jesus, I am a talking spirit. I will not be silent. I make declarations. I recreate my destiny. I change things. I keep things. I edit things using the power of prophetic speakings. Obtain grace to obey. Heaven, the readiness to judge all disobedience. If and when your obedience is complete, go ahead and pray. The grace to be always obedient. The grace to be always obedient. The obedience that commits God to perform. The obedience that commits God's word to perform. The obedience that produces strange order of miracles. Obtain grace to live a sacrificial life. Obtain grace to give yourself as a sacrifice upon the altar. You function like Christ by speaking like Christ, consistent with the word of God, obeying the principles that are contained therein as proof that you believe God and living a life of sacrifice. hallelujah hallelujah as always let me challenge you ladies and gentlemen please take the time take the time take it as an instruction in righteousness take the time listen to this teaching again don't assume you understood what I said listen carefully this time around like a student listening void of distraction sit down sometimes this night sometime maybe tomorrow morning just settle down and listen again pray the prayers with all your heart and watch what your life becomes have you been blessed tonight let me give someone an opportunity to know Jesus tonight remember we spoke about the nature of Christ let's minimize movement we just have one or two minutes and we're done you are in this place and you are saying apostle I cannot leave this place without making Jesus Lord of my life there's no need to cajole you there's no need to manipulate you you know that you need Jesus you were sent from your homes to this place some of you you traveled so far to be here and whilst you heard me speaking the Holy Ghost began to speak to you that when the man of God makes an altar call make sure you do not sit there I want to give you an opportunity to make it right with Jesus it pays to make it right with Jesus whether you are seated inside whether you are outside 
wherever you are, Zaria, UK, Canada, US, wherever, across the globe, I want to give you an opportunity to make it right. If you are in this place, I'm going to ask you to step forward very quickly. I count one to five, leave your seat in a hurry, and please be here standing, take your bags, your Bibles, whatever you came to church with. Let's begin to count now as they come. One, God bless you, God bless you, come. Two, God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. For your sake, we'll spare one more minute to allow you to make your way to the front. If you're coming from any of the overflows, please make haste. Make haste. Else you'll be required to just stand in front of your LEDs. Zaria, make sure that those who are making this, responding to this call, that they come out accordingly. Come. It matters that you make it right with Jesus. Do not say, I'll do it another day. It may be too late. Today is the time. Now is the hour of salvation. Hallelujah. God bless you. I see my little ones coming to make it right with Jesus. Let's celebrate them as they come. Hallelujah. I want to thank all of you for making this decision. It pays to know Jesus, to love him, and to serve him. Let me request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to this Jesus. Say after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you that you are the Son of God. I love you with all my heart. Tonight, I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I believe that I'm saved and I'm a child of God. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for this once. I decree and declare according to their confessions that they are saved today, saved forever, saved eternally in the name of Jesus. They spend their days loving you. They spend their days living for you. They spend their days serving your purposes. The power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. I'm seeing a spirit just roaming around. I command that spirit to live now in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare every influence on anyone causing chest pain, severe chest pain, let it be broken right now by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please look at me, gentlemen and ladies. Please move to my right. That will be your left. There are counselors who will be glad to have a word with you. They will pray with you and then you'll be on your way. Let's honor them as they go. Let's honor them as they go. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Just to remind us that we are days away to Sound of Revival UK. Make sure that you pray. I'll give um, more detailed announcements next week before we start. Please, I'd like you to invite everyone you know around this city. I want you to listen to next week's teaching. Um, we're going to deal with very serious issues here. It will be a time of prayer. We're going to be praying and we'll take the time to flog out some things with destiny once and for all. Have you been blessed tonight? I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, the nature and the character of Christ will be evidently manifested in your life. In the name of Jesus. Men will look at you and they will see Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for you the grace to function like God in experience. Let that grace be released upon you. You will speak like Christ and see results. You will obey and see the results. You will live a life of sacrifice and be elevated non-stop. In the name of Jesus, I declare that your week beginning is blessed. Let it be a week of testimonies, a week of signs and wonders. Shame and reproach is far from you. This is the week you encounter destiny help us. This is the week that you rise to another level. You will know God better this week. You will love God better this week. You will see results in your life. The Lord bless you. It is well with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Together as a family of faith, let's share the grace and fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us 
all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Greet someone, hug someone on your way out. The Lord bless you and see you. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.